um, today I kind of wanted to try something different and tell, I guess, a bit of a story that I haven't really told anybody in a while. And I don't know if I'm going to post this because it's a very sensitive subject and it took me a long time to get over it and you know and there's ooh double thin um it took me a long time uh to get over it and it sometimes randomly comes up out of nowhere i just think of it and just kind of shoots my whole day down i guess um, so around this time, well around September, like five years ago, something bad happened and I don't know, it just, it's the kind of thing that Yeah, I don't know, you don't think whatever really happened, like you always hear stories of it happening to somebody else, but then you actually witness it and it still seems kind of surreal, like, even when, like, even the year after where I was constant, constantly replaying what happened over and over again in my mind like randomly like for a year I had insomnia and I guess and post-traumatic stress disorder from that night because I was anxious and I couldn't sleep and I would constantly remember step by step what happened like there was a time where I would just bolt up in the middle of the night and I would just hear the crash and see every, I don't know. Anyway, um, I guess I just, so just say what happened and start from there, I guess. Um, I mean, I'm having like allergies or something. I don't know. So, four years ago, or five, I don't know what I'm crying at already. Um, I was in bed. I, I was always like a late night kind of girl. And I was in bed. I remember exactly what I was thinking about. It was about. 2 a.m. on a, I think a Friday night and all of a sudden I hear this crash and it's it sounds like if you ever hit, hit like a parked car or you've heard so, I'm not saying that I ever hit a parked car but if you've ever heard um, a car hit another car not going fast but just like like that kind of like crunch that's what it sounded like and so I get up um, I run out of my room and then like my mom's out and I guess my, my little brother is there too and cuz I uh, will start off I thought like someone hit a car in my driveway and I was like oh fuck because one of my family members actually have hit um, a parked car in our driveway before but that's another story, but it wasn't like a weird story, it was just they're in a rush and hit the car. Anyway, so we run outside and um, I have, I, I should have started the story with, I lived at the time off of a pretty busy main road in my hometown. <clears throat> so there was a, not a lot of traffic, like it wasn't like a crazy busy road, but it was there was a main road so everyone used it basically every day and um, at 
and I have a, I had a really long driveway and at the end of my driveway I saw a car and you know it was just headlights f facing uh, my house and we run up and you know you see like the smoke and they're just in the middle of the road and um, and I see that there's this car and um, the the hood is like demolished. Um, another thing that I should have said is at my driveway on, at the time we rented a house and there was two stone pillars on like a stone pillar on each side of the driveway. Um, so those two stone 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 pillars. I'm a horrible storyteller, anyway. Um, so there, there there was a car, and one of the pillars was destroyed. Like it was a cement pillar, and it was pretty much annihilated. And the car, um, the hood was all ripped off. Basically, the front window the front windshield was gone and there was no um you could see into the like the hood of the car and there was no engine the engine was basically by my house on the lawn like i want to say like 50 60 feet away from the car like it flew um it was just it was like so weird like it was and there were two other cars not involved in the accident but one of them ended up being one of my brother's friends and my little brother's friends and he was okay nothing happened to him and then there was another um p car again nothing happened to them but they were ju they just like kind of witnessed work came up upon it so okay so there the car and there was this kid and he gets out of the car or he's already out of the car and then another boy um, kind of uh, opens the, like the passenger door and he, he kind of like lays down on the pavement and he's in pain there's something wrong with his foot um, the other kid was like there's three of us there's three of us um, where's my friend and he's looking and like across from my sh my house is like a like a, I want to say a cornfield like I don't know it's like some sort of farm thing and there's always really tall grass and um he's looking he's like calling his name I'm not gonna say anybody's name because I don't want to you know but if you're from my town, you probably know um, the story I'm talking about. Um, so he's like, so he's looking, and I, and I, and it didn't quite hit me what was going on. Cause so we we're just looking around, and I'm at the top of the driveway, and I see a shoe. Like just a little red kid, like not little, like it was like a boy sized or a man sized <clears throat> um, shoe in the grass. And then I look to my left and I see a body. Uh, there was a body on the lawn. And it was me one of my brother's friends and my little brother um, and my mom in the driveway and we just saw this body and I and I couldn't go up to it like it was just it was just on the lawn and I couldn't I don't know I couldn't go and see and try to help or 
see if there was anything I could do. Like, I was just too scared. Like, I saw... Uh, I don't know. I just rose. And one of the other people in the car that stopped, not my brother's friend, but another kid, um, he went over and he's... <laughs> and he looked... see it on his face that um there was there was nothing that you could do like I don't know what it looked like it was dark but like you can tell his expression uh, it was bad and so he just walks away and well, obviously the cops and the police were called um, and they, it only took them a couple minutes to get there, um, and the police, the police are there, and the kids, there's still one kid on the ground, he's alive and alert, and I, I think my mom went up to talk to him, she, my mom was a police officer, or she just retired, um, and she was talking to him, and he was coherent, but his leg looked like it was messed up. Um, what else? Um, when the cops came, um, and like the EMT, and then they went to the body, and obviously he was gone. Like the, I want to say kid, but but he was he an adult, and he was gone. And then I guess they told the, the driver, who's also young, like around my age, um, and he said, he, I, I just remember him screaming and saying, um, I killed my best friend, I killed my best friend, and he's just breaking down and this, on the road and there are all these lights and... I just, it was just, it was just something that, like, I can never forget, and I, later, that night, the, one of my, the, I told you, one of my brother's friends was in another car, so he came inside, and he stayed over, because the road was closed down, and there was no way for him to get home, um, after you know the accident so we stayed and we watched um um we watched the gi joe movie that came out around the time where it was on dvd or something or had it on netflix and it was one it was horrible and two there was like this big crash scene and i saw it and it just like made me physically ill like i had to leave the room uh well we were trying to distract ourselves because there was still lights and cop cars and all sorts of stuff outside and yeah I am I pretty much stayed up all night that night and I ha I remember looking outside and I, I was just and they didn't move the body for hours like I, I know it was like light out and I still saw on um, the lawn the body with a uh, little tarp over it and it's just it was I mean I know how it feels to lose somebody but I've never seen it happen so violently like I don't know so I stayed up that whole night and as soon as I was supposed to go to work I was an assist manager at the time at like a shoe at a shoe store and I called in um, to my manager and I told her what had happened and I was crying and I was like 
there was a big accident outside my house and she's like yeah I saw it on the news and I was like oh shit like you don't realize like how like big something is I don't know it's just it was it was it was it was something so anyway um we learned that later or maybe it's the next day not the next day I gonna be a couple days from now um from then that it was actually someone that I knew uh I didn't I wasn't close to them at all but they were we were in some of the same classes together in high school and it just affected me so much and I and it turns out the kid that was driving um he had like a 0.15 alcohol blood alcohol like uh, and I think the limit is 0.08 and he also had like, marijuana in his system so basically I don't know I just like from from then uh, in the story I had anxiety and couldn't sleep and I would always have these kind of flashbacks and, and that lasted for like a year I want to say um, and from then on obviously I don't drink and drive like I think drinking and driving is the stupidest fucking thing you could ever do and you should never don't drink and drive it's not worth it like I don't care what kind of fun that you want to have but you can hurt some yourself you can hurt somebody else more importantly like that poor kid uh, he was so young and you know he had his whole life and he left behind like his mom and dad and his sisters and his brother and 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 it's just ruined for what for nothing for, for a good time for you know so I don't know just always have a designated driver and always have like a plan B don't drive if you know that you're fucked up like you, I'm sorry don't drive if you know that you're messed up it's not worth it and the kid that was driving um, I didn't follow the case or his trial or because obviously I had a lot of feelings about it but I just looked it up because today it just randomly popped in my head after years like I thought it was done with like feeling I don't know thinking about it but popped my head after like years and I looked it up and it's like two years after the accident I guess he was sentenced um, to four to twelve years in prison and he was a young kid too like he ruined his life the the boy who unfortunately passed away oh and the and the kid on the ground on the pavement who was alive he was ear severely injured like his leg was and his foot was really badly injured so all these kids all these like all these lives were impacted that night and you never know when you, you kid, people think that they can handle it their alcohol and that it won't affect them but it really does affect you and it really is important that you make sure that you make the right decision and the right decision is not to drive the right decision is to make sure you have another way home get a cab call a friend call your mom like there's so many even though people might be like irritated with you if you call them in the middle of the night because you, you went a little too far they'll at the end of the day they want you alive they don't want you to hurt yourself or hurt anybody else or at the very least like get a DUI like you don't need that you don't it not nothing is worth that so I don't know that's my little story time I guess 
it's not a good story it's a horrible story but I thought I would share and hopefully it uh, persuades somebody to not drink and drive <laughs>